there may still be a couple more. We'll, we'll uh, leave it. I'll just keep an eye on that for a minute. Um, so before we get started, a quick update. Yes, I did get on holiday. We, we lost the first three days of our vacation in the sense that the we were told the night before we were due to fly to Cocos Island, we have to go via Christmas Island, that the flight from Christmas to Cocos was cancelled. And the problem with that is that we could have left Perth, gone to Christmas and got stuck there with no accommodation because both islands are booked out solid. Uh, because of COVID, all Australians are doing a lot more domestic travel. And everywhere you want to go that's a popular holiday spot, the accommodation is booked out way in advance. So uh, we hadn't heard anything from the airline and uh, we were frantically phoning around on the morning we were due to go on the Tuesday. The problem is that there's only two flights a week to the Cocos Islands, Tuesday and Friday. And uh, we were told that the Tuesday flight, the, the second part of it was canceled. So, but we hadn't received any information. So we were phoning around and we didn't want to get stuck on the wrong island with nowhere to stay. Um, so basically in the end, we were advised by the local area manager to cancel the flight. And then, then we were told that there would be a recovery flight to try and catch up all the stranded passengers, but that might go direct from Perth to Cocos. So we didn't want to be, yeah, as I said, stuck on the wrong island and not able to move from one to the other because they are a thousand kilometers apart. It's a bit too far to swim. Um, <laughs> so anyway, long story short, we were advised to cancel that. And then we had to rebook for the Friday when some seats opened up, but then they charged us an extra $1,400. So we've got to have a little discussion with the airline about that one. Um, we also lost three days of accommodation on the island that we can't get back. And it's just one of those things. There was thunderstorm activity and you can't control the forces of nature, which is one of the things we will be coming to talk about this morning, funnily enough. Anyway, we made the best of it. We, we uh, decided we would spend some time with our friends in, on the coast in Scarborough. And then we went down to Fremantle, which is the port city, just further down from Perth. Had a night stay in a, in a hotel we didn't even know about before, which was a lovely old hotel from the 1880s. And uh, we mm -hmm. made the best of it. And then we caught the Friday flight and still had a week in focus. So, and got some magnificent diving in. Uh, the photo behind me actually is not from this trip. It was from the previous one we did in September, where I actually had the joy of scuba diving with 12, a pot of 12 dolphins that came and joined us for most of the mm -hmm. dive. And we're just playing around interacting with us. It was great fun. Um, this time, I didn't see the dolphins underwater, but that we saw them from the boat. And you may have seen the video I put on the Creating Your Life, uh, Your Ideal Life Facebook page, where there was dolphins swimming all around the boat, and we had about 40 of them. And that was just amazing. Uh, morning, Julie. Good morning. I'm, I'm, in my, I'm in my car. Well, welcome from your car. So we won't ask you to read anything. Are you driving? Were you no, 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 I'm not driving. I've got a beautiful park. Because we have to put our disclaimers in place, you know, that we can't be responsible for... <laughs> <laughs> beautiful park. Beautiful okay. park. <laughs> it's raining, though. Raining and cold. So, no, I'm not going to attempt to drive. So I can read it out. Okay, well... Before we get into the reading, out, anyone else have anything, any updates they want to share, any exciting news from the last couple of weeks that we've been apart? Yes, life has just gone 180 degrees to from, from pretty good to, you know, fantastic. Wow, what happened? And it's all, all because of this. <laughs> what, what's continually happening on this web, on this community? Yes. That's great. Think, great to hear. Things are opening up all the time. And the vibration inside me is changing rapidly. And, um, and, and I feel such a sense of love and appreciation. And I just want to give back you now. <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's how I feel. That's awesome. I think everyone on the call can relate to that. Good. I've had quite a big week. Um, last Friday, my best friend's mum died. Oh. So it's been a really quite a big roller coaster with lots of opportunity for generated listening. So, yes. yeah. But it's been really good. 
but it was really sad because she wasn't that old. She was only 69. Yeah. <gasps> well, um, sorry for your loss. It was good that you were there to be able to support the family, though. Yeah, yeah, it was good. And that, unfortunately, is uh, is the cycle of life that we all know one day our time will come. And it's why it's so important to make the most of what time we do have. And, and notice the dolphins and notice the trees around you and the oceans and the rivers and everything else. Yeah. Be present to it all. Anyone else have anything dramatic that's happened in the last couple of weeks or they want to share? Can I just say, I want to say thank you to Stan. Stan did an awesome mastermind last week, which I so appreciated. And I really hope he doesn't mind that I borrow that for another mastermind that Binta and I were, are in for Monday. Is that okay? It's a, it's a free mastermind. Do whatever you like. With it. <laughs> thank you. And, and I would say I'm like a pirate. So I would use the case method. Copy and steal everything. <laughs> no, see, see, that's the difference. Being a social worker, I don't steal. I ask before steal. Permission I borrow. Is <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't steal. I borrow. But if you give me permission, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, we missed you, Tony, obviously. But um, yeah. I just want to say the mastermind that I did was a fun, free-flowing mastermind. We ended up talking about food. And, and like vegetables and fruit from where we lived. It was kind of awesome. And we got to know each other on a different level, which is really cool. And then Stan did this awesome mastermind last week about relationships and he has very specific questions, um, which I, I mean, I love both the weeks. I don't know about everybody yeah. else, but I just want to say thank you. Yes, I, I, want, I wanted to say that's that is what I you know when Tony asked the question that's what I was going to talk about I talk about the fact that you had your mastermind and we all had like we chatted throughout the time we were there it was so fun <laughs> and then the next time um, Stan did his mastermind with all the questions and we kind of like you know took turns writing down what we think it was fun so yeah I enjoyed that so much <laughs> And this is the power of the mastermind, guys. It you know it's not all about um, an individual leading it. it. It's it's about us all coming together, and everyone everyone's opinion is valued, and everyone has something to contribute. And even for those people who sometimes don't speak up very much, just being present is still putting your energy into the meeting, uh, which is something we'll be coming to in a moment about the yes. topic that we've just been reading. I've only just read the first two pages, so I'm a bit guilty. Okay, I was just about to ask that. Just for a quick, quick show of hands. Anyone who's not up to date hasn't hasn't had chance to read it yet. There's a couple of you, I'm sure. Yet, well, we as we said before, there's no there's no naughty corners. Don't worry, we won't make you stand in the corner with a dancer's cap on your head or anything like that. Um, I won't let you. <laughs> Well, it's pretty hard to stand in a corner when you're on a Zoom mastermind as well anyway, but... Um, in a car. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> you have to change seats, Julie. <laughs> so uh, the principle, though, is that just by being here and being involved in the discussion, you will either learn something or you will be able to contribute something from which other people will learn anyway. So even if you haven't read it, it's okay. We won't hold it against you this time. But you did have an extra couple of weeks there to catch up. But, you know, life gets in the way. We understand it. So, um, I'm too busy but, making pumpkin pies. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Obviously, the diet, the, the, the talk about food work then, Vicky. So uh, you've, you've connected on a global scale there and transmitted your, your desires into a material equivalent. <laughs> so uh, I should fill you in. One of my friends is a chef. And he says, you don't, you don't use canned pumpkin. You take a real pumpkin, you cut it up, you like scoop out the insides, you put it in the oven, you bake it. That's what you use for your pumpkin pie, your pumpkin, whatever. It's awesome. That's what I shared in the mastermind when you weren't here. You can't, you can't get canned pumpkin here. I've never seen it. Oh, 
You can in Canada. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Not, not that I use it, of course, because I use the actual pumpkin, but not that you missed much, Tony, on your vacation, but that's what we talked about. Well, I guess you can stock up your doomsday room with your canned pumpkin. <laughs> when the world all goes astray. <laughs> all right. Well, obviously, I missed a, a, a scintillating chat there, and Stan didn't record it, so I can't catch up on that one, unfortunately. So I'm <laughs> reliant on, upon these little snippets of information. Anyhow, let's, uh, without undue course, we've got Carly on the call as well, by the way, but she's busy uh, preparing for her next meeting, so she's going to be quiet, she said. But we'll still we'll still sense her, her energy and vibes, I'm sure. So we're going to go into chapters 13 and 14 today of Think and Grow Rich, which chapter 13 was the brain, and chapter 14, the sixth sense. So intriguing discussions will ensue, I'm sure. Um, let's get, get the formalities out the way and just bring up the, um, I'll just do the screen share with the Noble Goldman principles, if I can find them. There we go. Oh. I need to enlarge that. There we go. Can we all see that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Take you know your sidebar I, off, Tony. You know what I, just one second. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to give everyone a number, didn't I? Yeah. So, Vicky, I think you were on first, weren't you? So, Vicky can go number one. Now I can't remember who. Sure. Was. I think Glenn <laughs> was number two. Um, who was next? Pinter, I think, was number three. Sorry, who was number two? Two is Glenn. Three, oh, yeah. Pinter. Okay, I can't remember, so I'm just going to go whoever I see now. So, Coralie, I think, number four. Uh, who have we got? Stan, number five. <laughs> number six if you're joining in yes um we'll leave carly out because she's busy at the moment and i'll go number seven did you call me i didn't hear you yeah i'll just go again so that's vicky number one glenn number two binter three coralie four stan five julie six and me seven and carly's going to be quiet for the moment okay and we'll just share that screen again so we don't have to do it from memory Okie dokie. Vicky, would you like to leave? <clears throat> sure. The purpose, of, the purpose of the mastermind is to learn yeah. leadership, build teams, and create multiple oh. sources of income oh. together. We are here to inspire and challenge each other to reach and exceed goals. Each member Speaking is committed. Each member is committed to their own success as well as the success of every member of the group. We are committed to meeting in person or virtually for one hour every week. We are present. There is no multitasking or distractions during the meeting. Julie? Have we lost Julie? No, but you, it hasn't come on to the next page. Ah, <laughs> that old excuse. <laughs> no, you should have been six. Oh, hang on. You should have been six, yeah. Should have been six. We are collaborative. Yep, we are collaborative. We listen without interrupting, lecturing or judging. We celebrate each other's successes without jealousy. We are honest and participate by giving thoughtful feedback. We are open and listen to different perspectives without being defensive or offering excuses. We trust fellow members enough to share fully. We are focused, but we also think it's important to have fun during meetings. We are real and authentic. This is a no BS zone. We are focused, but we also think it's, that it's important to have fun during meetings. Uh, you're number 13, Julie. Oh, sorry. Do you want to do number 13? Oh, yeah. We are real <laughs> and no. authentic. Next well, one. <laughs> Keep going. It's the next one. We allow ourselves to become completely confused. No, no. We allow ourselves to become <laughs> completely aligned with each other. And the high forces, one mind, one soul, 
one love. Well done, Julie. We got there in the end. No <laughs> Goldman International is a conscious, aware, and engaged global community of abundance and freedom creators. <clears throat> Our mission is to create one million millionaires who are free from the time for money paradigm. We focus on creating multiple streams of income through masterminding, team building, and the effective utilization of the internet best platforms. The mastermind becomes an opportunity for self-mastery, where the self transcendent shift from the me to the we to the us occurs. As congruence and engagement increases, the world's consciousness is then raised one meaningful and inspired relationship at a time. Well done. Thank you. Nice. All. And thank you, Julie, for reading those things out. We obviously felt we needed to repeat them and take them <laughs> of extra importance today. Thank you. It's that old teaching background, isn't it? It's the we wanted us to have repetition and really absorb those lessons. So, uh, okay, well, chapter 13. Who would like to start off by saying what you got out of that chapter? On the brain. Pinky, pinky, pinky. Well, obviously, it's going to have to be someone who's read chapter 13, I guess. Um, chapter 13. My brain is working. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> okay, Stan. Well, that's an inspiring. I... <laughs> problem with the brain in that one there so. exactly <laughs> what i get out of it is that the the, the brain is a is a, a receiving set of station of communicating between the subconscious mind so it's a station for communication that's what I get yes very good <laughs> now i only read three pages two pages three pages uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> but already it, it just resonated with other things I've, I've read um, before, and that our thoughts are not our own, that they're out there and they're a vibration that can be picked up anywhere, you know. And I think of that um, story of the monkeys, you know, the monkeys on one island and then right across the world, and the monkeys on another island started, you know, washing their sweet potato or whatever it was. Have you heard that? Um, story that the you know they were miles away but they did the same thing at the same time so you know our thoughts are not personal they're a vibration that people can pick up so you know it's sort of even though i kind of knew this when i read this first two pages i thought you need to read this book properly julie you need to read it again properly because it's at a different level now so, you know, it's, it's, it's the law of attraction as well, isn't it? That um, when you're on a vibration, it isn't it exciting that thoughts are so powerful? It is. Uh, do you think that might be how Facebook knows what we're, we, what we're talking about, what we're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they might have a super person there that's picking it all up. <laughs> they, they could, that, but that could be a whole other topic of discussion. <laughs> but of course, it's the negative yeah. things too. So that's why you have to do the laundry. Yes. So big brother is listening. Or big sister. Or, you know, whoever. The other side of the world may be listening to those thoughts and picking up on them. Well, you, you'll be attracting the wrong things. That's the, the whole well, point. We all know. How many times have you thought of a friend or somebody that you, you, you've thought mm. about and then the next thing is they, they call you or you bump yep, into them? Yep, absolutely. Now, that can't be coincidence. It happens too many times through your life. So there is and definitely a, an attraction there. There's something where you, you think about someone, you focus on them. And, you know, when you look back through the centuries, it's been the, the topic of prayer, you know, the discussion of prayer, that when we all direct our energy, mm -hmm. our good wishes or our thoughts or our um, condolences, it depends on, on what the situation is. But when we all apply and direct our thoughts to something, it has power. Do you know that reminds me of what they used to say about the monasteries? You know that the monks would all go off and be completely isolated from the rest of the world. And that was their duty so that they could pray and communicate, you know, a love of God to lift the rest of the world. <laughs> you know, well, that was their job as such. 
Yeah, years ago, I went to a Hawaiian Huna uh, seminar, mm -hmm. a five-day seminar in Byron Bay on the East Coast. It was supposed to be held in Hawaii, but the weather was bad, so we ended up in Byron Bay instead. <laughs> and uh, we had a, a Hawaiian teacher came over, uh, Dr. Serge Kahili King, who a famous author and speaker mm -hmm. over in Hawaii. And he was talking about the, the, the spiritual teachings that they passed down from one generation to another. It was very, very fascinating topic of the whole five days was absolutely amazing incredible people on the course do it as well and they took us off to a waterfall and a rainforest and various other things throughout in the middle of the course to practice things mm. but he was saying that they had used this power in hawaii where they had a an imminent cyclone approaching one of the islands and potentially going to destroy one of the islands and they got everybody uh, you know, through, through the news bulletins and so on, they got everyone to direct their thoughts and, and prayers and wishes towards this cyclone to get it to move. And at the last minute, it you know, whether the, whether this is coincidence or scientifically, whatever, you know, whether you can prove it or it's a, it's a theory, but that cyclone at the very last minute changed direction and avoided the island altogether. And they they all firmly believed that it was the power of their their positive direction of thought uh, towards that cyclone that, that caused it to to change direction because it was so it scientifically it didn't kind of make sense the way it happened it it, it was uncharacteristic and in the way that it moved and the scientists couldn't disprove it either no <laughs> that's the that's the interesting thing that's the age-old argument of, of science versus uh versus belief in, in spiritual powers although i think they're getting closer to seeing what happens Certainly there seems the to be more and more uh, media communications about it that, you know, I, I just recently picked up a, a, um, a course called about the sixth sun. Um, there, there's, there's more and more on, on channels like Gaia and, and Netflix and yeah. Foxtel and yeah. so on, all about spiritual awakenings and the power of the conscious mind. And, you know, it seems to be, I don't know if it's, if it's the, um, you know where you where you look for something what confirmation bias where you look for something and you see it more often but i i certainly seem to be aware that there's more and more of these programs and these broadcasts being put out uh, more books seem to be written on the subject as well so it may be that i'm looking for them but i i definitely feel that there is a, a, an increasing amount of material available on these topics and brain research the thing is people like dispenser are um, now you know th 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 he's actually recording what's happening with people during healing and things like that and they're actually seeing what's happening within the brain during this um sort of healing process so it won't be long before they really can show you know what do you call it um data or whatever scientific proof that something's happening anyway and you know, I think that we're getting closer and closer because a lot of these um, specialists are, to, are, are seeing that, you know. I mean, you have to be pretty close-minded not to see it, don't you, really? What also gives weight to that is that you're seeing these books becoming bestsellers and you're seeing any talks on the subject going viral. On, on Yeah, the, so on. people are hungry. But, yeah, yeah, people are looking for that information because that's, the evidence of that is in the ratings you know that that people more and more people are watching these things more and more people are reading about these things so uh, i think we're definitely feeling a ah. an awakening a global awakening let's hope we, yes. we can awaken the world before we a reckoning destroy the planet, you know? <laughs> but i think that i think that's what um julie was saying about the monkeys we're starting to as the awareness goes the awareness is moving faster than and just passing a book to someone yeah well it's happening on this group this this platform we belong to it's happening yeah amazingly and i think that i think that we owe it all to technology too social media without social media i mean how can we spread all this information yeah. we're spreading you know we're so right lucky. Like, the world is big but it's, it seems like it's we live in a small world because information travels so fast like Sometimes I will get a message from my country in Gambia and say, hey, do you know this? And I'm like, how did, what, what? <laughs> so I'm like, they hear it before I do, you know? So yeah, social media has to, um, you know, technology is a, definitely a, a big, big part of this, so. Yeah. 
we are very fortunate that we have this, this technology available to us. So now, going back to the chapter on the brain, uh, as was mentioned, the subconscious mind is the sending station of the brain, um, where your thoughts are vi vibrating and they are broadcast. The creative imagination is the receiving set. Yeah. Those energies of thought are picked up. So it starts with the principle of auto suggestion, which is where you put your the thoughts that you want, the desires that you want, you, you implant those through auto suggestion into your subconscious mind. That then becomes the sending station. And then the other people's um, minds are the receiving stations, which they then transmit back to you. So that's why when you put out a question of, you know, how can I do something better? Or how can I achieve this? Or how could I, you know, how could I provide water for the third world nation or whatever? The more you start putting these thoughts out there, the more they are received. Oh, Carly's with us. Welcome, Carly. Uh, the more you that you see these these thoughts are received, and then you get the the hunches or the inspiration. You get the answers to the questions that you're putting out there. Anyone? Any thoughts Absolutely. on that? Vicky. So I'm going to go with the telepathy thing. So <laughs> uh, I can tell you last spring when I was in my the middle of whatever I was going through with quarantine and being sick and ill and whatever, I, I felt this presence talking to me. And I felt it like internally. That might sound a little bit weird, but I agreed to whatever they asked me to do, which I still don't remember fully if that makes sense, because I was kind of delusional, I was fever, I had a lot of stuff going on. I didn't meet the typical uh, um, symptoms of whatever was going on at the time, so I was told to stay home. But I know I agreed to something, and I still know over a year later, whatever I agreed to was the right thing that I agreed to, but I don't know who I agreed to, if that makes sense. But it felt right, and I still feel it, 14, 15 months later. So to me, it was a telepathic kind of thing that I was having a mental conversation with somebody that had nothing to do with like physically being around them. It was a spiritual, um, Kelly could probably better describe an energy kind of thing that I just, I felt, I knew it was right. And I said, yes. And here I am 16 months later, and I know it was the right decision. <laughs> Whether it was Noble Goldman or something else doesn't matter to me, but I agreed to something that felt right at the time, if that makes sense. So this telepathic communication to me is more of an energy level, uh, non-physical level kind of uh, communication, if that makes sense. I'm yeah. wondering, yes. Vicky, I'm wondering yes. if you... It could have also just been your source, that part of you. I don't. Or, or your source, you know, your 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 bigger self, your connection with the eternal. You know, it could have been you, your soul, <laughs> speaking directly. I'm, I'm hoping that's the case, but unfortunately, during this two week time period that I was delusional and and had high fever and whatever, I have no recollection of it. I just know I said yes to something. And I moved on afterwards. I still have no clue what I said yes to. And the more I try to figure out what it was, it, it doesn't appear. So I've decided just to let it go and just let the flow happen, if that makes sense. Or trust, or just trust that it was. I'm, right I'm trusting, yeah, totally that's... trusting at this point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because it was good advice. <laughs> well, the word that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm very happy. Yes. Yeah. Word that comes I'm sorry, up, Tony. I... No, it's fine. The word that comes up towards the end of, of this this uh, reading that we're doing is is faith. So faith, you have faith yeah. in that instruction or that, um, that what you've received, even if you can't consciously make sense of it yeah. or clearly remember it. But nevertheless, whatever the message was that you were meant to get, it's been received. Yes. Kelly. Oh, Kelly, Kelly wants to say something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because the thing Hi. is, hello, hello, there's a frequency energy in everything. 
as we know. So we can have negative thoughts or we're actually, actually I'll start here. We can have positive thoughts. We're in our positive affirmation, hence why we're in Noble Goldman. We're in our positive group, but we step out of our group, out of our comfort zone. We go to the shopping center. There's a man there. He's thinking real shitty. Okay, sorry. Sorry, man. There's a woman there. She's thinking real <laughs> shitty thoughts. <laughs> negative thought no because I always you always use men when you're a woman so I'm saying woman and she's thinking the worst thoughts like you know she's, okay no I don't want to say that okay so um the worst negative thoughts possible and you're in your positive and our our um, radio waves our, our frequency picks up on that we take it on and we start thinking the same and we've suddenly, we think they're ours. We're owning them as ours because they're mm. so clear in, our, in our, our body and mind. And we start to think, why am I thinking that? We haven't even realized until we read this chapter that we're actually blobbing into someone else. So we just isolate <laughs> and release that thought. We just state it. I remove that thought from my body. I'm flipping back into my thought. Yeah, that's good, good, good advice. Right? Good, Kelly. The, the frequency of that blobs into you again because that other person is so grounded in that belief from months of that negative energy and paradigm building up, building up, building up that they are going to do something really bad and you're blobbing into the fear of it. Like, you know, because your, your, your energy field's telling you there's fear, get out of here, get out of here. So, Vicky heard the voice yes. of, of the universe of, God, of, of her <laughs> angels of her spiritual guardians that love her unconditionally they said get out of here and you knew because it wasn't your voice it wasn't your mind but your mind heard it because it is the one thing that's more powerful than us in a physical body and I've heard the voice many times and that voice, you can't deny that voice. That voice is not anything else you've ever heard. It's not spirit talking to you through some clairvoyant. It is a voice that is so knowing you do it because you know it's the truth. Now that came through the frequency, the frequency we're all awakening to, but in a physical body from our upbringing and our wounds, we've forgotten how to connect into that in every moment. We actually can hear that in every moment if we're awake, but it took you to be in hallucinations with high temperatures to be awake. Pretty today. much. And that, that I, is when you're fully surrendered. You can't help yourself. You're in full temperature. You can't do anything. You're, you're in a frequent. So even a temperature puts you in another frequency. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I can say, uh, I, I didn't meet the traditional uh, pandemic, whatever, back a year ago in April, because I didn't have the respiratory stuff and I was told to stay home. I had a high fever. I, would know, I know I was delusional. I know I had a lot of stuff going on, but I remember saying yes to something. What I said yes to, I still have no clue of, yeah. but I've chosen to accept whatever the higher power is, because for me, it's not, it's not God, because I'm not religious. I'm more of a spiritual mother nature kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it was, it led me to Noble Goldman like a month later. And that's all I'm very happy about. So um, whatever that was is awesome. Uh, but I just know I said yes to something. And the thing is, I don't know what I said yes to, but I don't think it matters anymore at this point. <laughs> The, the, the yes you said yes to was the, the authentic, true, unconditional, loving, the energy you want to say yes to. The, we say yes to everything else all of the time in our physical body and half the time we aren't awake in our body, aware, fully present to our body's wisdom and we're saying yes to things we don't want all of the time. Half the time we don't know we are, and the other times we do know we are because we go down the wrong rabbit hole and it doesn't work out. Well, can I just 
Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Carly. I just wanted to um, ask a favour of everyone. Uh, Glenn has had to leave the call because he's not feeling well. Can we oh. all, can we all direct our thought for a moment, our energy and our positive wishes for his <laughs> recovery and him feeling better quickly? Carry on, Carly. <laughs> oh, I. That was it really because I know at the end it said, talks about the fear and the faith and like when you hear the when you hear the clear knowing voice the voice that is clear knowing you can't deny it and we all can tap into it it's just we're taking away the layers of the old energy that came with the old paradigms and thoughts from all of our lineage <laughs> family our present moment like we can't blame anything because for you know, if you believe in a past life, you could have created your entire family lineage trauma anyways. You can't blame anything. You just are here right now on the earth. You make the most of it. And you get in your body, your frequency, get in those colors that Stan sees, like he sees frequency through colors. Other people hear it. Other people just know it. Other people see it. People see energy. It's whatever is right for you and you'll know if you're fully in your body and heart, you'll, you'll know. All right, I'd just like to take something that was at the end of that chapter before we move on to the next one uh, about the, the, the connection between uh, clairvoyance and te telepathy. Um, and that the teachings that, that a lot of the, th the things that I've read and mentioning the, the Hawaiian course that I went on there that, that Serge Kahili King ran, um, is that telepathy and clairvoyance are actually gifts that we all possess. It's just that many of us have forgotten that we possess them and we don't tap into them. And it's a bit like a muscle. If you don't use it, you don't, you know, you lose it. Um, we all have that gift. We all have that power. We all have the, the ability to tune in and connect to to these unseen forces and to and to use them to our advantage if we want to achieve something we want to send good wishes to people we want to be a positive force in the world we all have that ability to tap into those things we just need to work on it and it goes on to say at the end that one of the things one of the ways we can do that is by getting together and and having a mastermind that we can connect with each other and that in doing so we create that that intangible synergy of you know one plus one equals three or more uh where we we by coming together you know they say a problem solved a problem shared as a problem halved we we work together to bounce off each other to go on to an even higher level than we could each individually I have to say that I'm um, talking about all these things. I, I was I was never taught that, you know, growing up back home, nobody even knows anything about this. And for me to discover all these things is so powerful. Ever since I discovered this, uh, tapping into my so-called sixth sense, like, I can't even tell you how many times, like, when, when I, when everything shifted for me was, when Valerie, Val, Valerie Fagan uh, introduced me to Bob Proctor, the, the paradigm shift. And she, she, I met Valerie and she connected with me and said, hey, I've been in personal development for four years and nah, nah, nah. I, you know, I would like to, for you to check this out and see if it's for you. It took me two weeks to, to decide, but when I heard Bob Proctor speak, something in me says, say yes. Say yes, yes. and I just clicked the button. Okay, I'm gonna do it. And that changed my life for a bad practice, literally shifted my, the way I think. And ever since it's been like, and then noble woman, noble woman comes and I say yes to that. Every time something, I just ask myself, is this, is this a yes? Is this a resounding, resounding yes to you? How do you feel? And I just go with that. And I can tell you that for all the decisions that I'm making now, everything, I just, I just, I just tune in. I just sit here and I meditate and I tune into myself and I see how I feel. And uh, speaking of like sending vibrations to people, what I've been doing lately is doing mantras, 30-day mantras. So when I realize some like 
for instance, last month, my sister at home was severely sick and she sent me this message that broke my heart and I thought she was going to die or something. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do a 30-day prayer for her. And, and it's a 30-day mantra, which I, I picked, a, I have a book that's called Healing Mantras, and I picked a mantra from that book. And I repeated it every day for 30 whole days. And I would sit with my mala beads, beads and just, you know, do it for 108 times. And, and I sent her, I just, it was all like this repetition, you know. And it's really amazing how you say these vibrations work. And, and I can tell you now when I was talking to her, I'm not saying maybe it's, maybe it's me, maybe not. But when I tell you, when I spoke to her today, when every time I talk to her, she tells me, I'm getting better. I'm, and today I talked to her, so I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, I said, like, it's really what? <laughs> you know, and I've done it for myself too. I've done healing mantras for myself and I saw the difference that it, done, it, 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 it does for me. And so these vibrations and deep, tapping into your deeper self is really, really, it does work. And I'm just so grateful to find that out and I'd like to everybody in the world to learn it. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Benta, for sharing that. There's just one last thing I want to mention on from the chapter and it's uh, something that could easily have been missed. It said, if you understand the principle described in the chapter on the mastermind, you of course recognize the round table procedure here described as being a practical application of the mastermind. So the round table caught my attention um, because it made me think back to King Arthur, who mm -hmm. famously uh, won over all his knights by getting rid of his long rectangular table, the traditional table, and putting in installing a round table with the principle that every knight's opinion was valued and that they all wanted to be heard. Mm -hmm. And that, as he said, around that table, that uh, it, he would lead the discussion as the king, but not to think of him as the king, but to think of him that everyone is equal around this table, everyone's opinion matters, mm -hmm. um, which is the same principle that we're applying here in the mastermind. I thought very interestingly, I remember reading a, a, um, a little while back that the, to use a sports story here, uh manchester city who's my great enemy because i'm a united fan but they had a, a new <laughs> manager there a few years ago pep guardiola who came in from spain and one of the first things he did was to change completely refurbish the changing rooms where the players sat and have the seating arranged in a circle so that they they all were nobody was sort of in these little cliques where they'd hide in the corner and chat with their mate you know everyone was visible to everyone else and everyone when they had their team talks everyone's opinion was included in the discussions i thought how brilliant you know he's applying the king arthur principle and of course city went on to win the champ win the, the premier league a, a couple of times in a row so he he proved uh, by getting the results that by bringing the people together by using the power of the mastermind the power of the synergy that's created that you can make extraordinary things happen so going on to the next chapter, which is chapter 14 on the sixth sense. So sixth sense is that portion of the subconscious mind, which has been referred to as the creative imagination. It has also been ref referred to as the receiving set through which ideas, plans, and thoughts flash into the mind. The flashes are sometimes called hunches or inspiration. So, do we think that's what Vicky received? Flashes of hunches and inspiration? Sounds like it, doesn't it? Anyone else want to share anything about their their hunches, their inspirations, whether they've experienced this? I think we experience them all the time, especially if the mind's quiet and you're just, but even when it's not, you know, something can kick in. You just know something, you walk into a room or somebody said something you know I mean I think it happens without us really consciously taking notice yeah well uh, communication you know um you know 67.3 percent of statistics are made up on the spot mm -hmm. um I just made that <laughs> one up. but 93 percent it said of communication is non-verbal so it, it's actually only a very small percentage of what we're, what we're hearing when someone speaks, when they walk into the room, is the real communication. The, the essence of it is 
we pick up on the energy of that person. We pick up on, you know, the, before they say a word, we can tell whether someone's in a good mood or a bad mood or there's something troubling them or, you know, we have those insights. And a lot of that is the nonverbal gestures and signals and facial expressions and, you know, posture and general demeanor that we're picking up on all these signals. But, you know, essentially we are animals that have evolved to be able to communicate through, through speech and through writing. But most of our communication is just, it transcends languages. It transcends any other limitations that we put on ourselves. So can I say, can I say that that's intuition? Yeah. Because a lot of us pick up on stuff intuitively. Mm. We just know it. And I, and I can't put an explanation. Kelly might be better at this, but you come across somebody new, you know, immediately if they're being honest and truthful, because you pick on their, you pick up on their intuitiveness. I don't know how else to put it. It, it to me, for sure, I don't care what somebody says, it's based on their nonverbal. Like if I look at their body language, I look at their, you know, their uh, energy, their aura, whatever, if we're tuned into that, you automatically know, like as a gut instinct, which to me is linked to your intuitiveness, if somebody's being truthful or not. So I don't know if Kelly wants to add to that, but that that's what I go on being a social worker. <laughs> The vibes. <laughs> the vibes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. The vibes. Um, yeah. uh, definitely you're picking up on that, but it's back to that frequency because you're picking up on positive, you're picking up on negative. When we're not fully in our body, when we're just in our mind, we our mind gets a hold of that, our fear kicks in, our mind takes what we're thinking suddenly and we start going down the rabbit hole of fear when we're in our full body full inner body fully connected to our lower body and we get wind of a message like that like the frequency hits us it bounces back off or we get it and go that's not that that's not my normal thought and you instantly let it go but when we're only in our mind, when we're not in our full physical presence, we actually grab onto that and then in the subconscious it sits and then we start seeing things that are occurring around us that bring more of that. So if you're seeing something in your mirror, out in the community, no matter what it is, you just, you just get aware and you just decide in that moment what you do want back to what you do want even if it's a goal go back to whatever your affirmation is whatever you're been working on that day and you do you do it automatically when you're awake not everyone does but you know this is why addiction is really tricky because you're so in the addiction you can't see the reality like and so you can't flip it back into what you want because you're so in, in it. Well, our mind does all that. Our mind gets stuck in that. Wouldn't matter what the addiction is. It could be you're addicted to being a victim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your mind yeah. gets stuck in anything that relates to being a victim. The people around you, you pull them in energetically because they're in victim. You become a family of victim in your friends. It's all because of energy. It's all because your, your energy field vibrates out as victim and you bring in every victim around you that becomes your best friends. And all you ever talk about is victim stories, stories about the other person. You're blaming the, the grandparent. You're blaming the school teacher down the street. You're all in victim. All, and it's all energy. It all started with energy. Your vibration brought in those people even from a child so it could be anything Vicky anything at all it so, doesn't have to be just positive it is everything everything starts with vibration so yeah. Kelly when you leave 99% of your friends behind because they ditch you <laughs> that means you're not connected on the same level I'm assuming yeah and like, you just journey forward 
and you start again, correct? Yeah. Well, you've got to trust in all of that crap. You've got to trust yep. that where you're heading, like in Noble Goldman, for instance, yep. your va vibration yeah. with people like Mark Santos, he's already there. He's already awake. He's already, yeah. he already hears his guardians and guides and he already knows the divine void. He's been there. So my, my thing is he knows all that. We've come into Noble Goldman. Some of us are awake to that. Others are learning about that even in this conversation through this book. We're all awakening at different levels. Mm -hmm. but, be, but, but because Mark's awake, he's pulled us all in. Mm. Because we're here to awaken. Not everyone else is yet. Not everyone else is here to awaken. So your friends aren't ready. Obviously. <laughs> and when uh, they can drop, I just, a, drop away, can I just, you can't worry yeah. about that. Because if they're meant to awaken, they'll mirror back to you. They'll see you change and they'll want that. They'll feel the difference. If they don't want that, they're not ready. And they'll come back. So can I just express my gratitude to NG because... <laughs> It's like the only group that gets me and I so appreciate it. And I'm just grateful. I just want to say that. So, Ricky, I hear, you. I hear you so deeply and so am I. <laughs> so awesome. Am I. We're, um, we're molding our collection of, uh, of misfits and um, negative thinkers into uh, positive thinkers and successful community members. <laughs> I just wanted what had just occurred to me when you were talking about that, Carly. When I was a child, I remember going into this one particular store with my mother, and they had this little device here, which was a collection tin for the for the blind association. But one of the things that you what how how it worked was you you put a coin in the top, and you ever the, the expression the penny dropping. You'd watch the coin go down this like little slide and then it would hit something and it would bounce off and it would go down the next and it would keep on dropping through these little holes in the slides until it got down to the bottom and then ka -ching, it dropped into the collection tin at the bottom so it was a i always thought you know looking back that was a great way of getting money out of people because it amused the children so they would be asking the parents can i get a coin because they wanted to watch it going down the slide so with all of us it's like the penny is dropping you know each uh, each call we go on, each each thing we read, each video we watch, there's an aha moment, there's a penny that drops where you go, that's the thing I was meant to learn from that call. And then you just go, you keep on going through these levels of growth where you, you are acquiring new little snippets of pieces of the jigsaw that's all coming together towards your own self-mastery, towards your own awakening, your own self-understanding. Carly, you're bursting to say something I can tell. <laughs> not, not really. I was just going to add, it's your own self-acceptance, self-love. Like self-acceptance is a huge one because we can't always accept ourselves in what we do see in a mirror from other people. Like we do struggle, like even with Vicky and her friends dropping away, even that had a, a pain point for her. So in that, you've got to come back to self-acceptance that you that your soul does have you on the right path. And when you accept that, you surrender that, you then you actually bringing yourself self-love in that, in that acceptance. And then there's a trust in that. And all of those things become self-love, like trust becomes self-love. And when we can master those things, we then are in the frequency where you hear, you know, the right voice that gives you the protection that says, get out of this scene right now, or go this way, go to this direction, this person, and here's NG. Like you do really, you know, and so, yeah, it's just all, the, all about self-love. I mean, Dr. Kim's teaching it as well. There's so many people out there at this time on the earth teaching all about self-love and in the past it was all about everyone else you always put everyone else first and took care of everyone else but now even in a family the mother's got to come back to self-love first before she can take care of the kids and it might have been a statement in the past but not everyone not every mother on this planet was putting themselves first 
there is no way we were all putting ourselves first. Well, imagine the disempowerment of that of the feminine when the masculine was always put first. The women were putting their men's first, feeding the men their meal, doing the washing. No, I'm not saying anything about that. There's nothing wrong with all of that. It's, it's a part for us all. But all I'm saying is deep down, were we putting ourselves first in unconditional love? In self-trust. That's, that's great, Carly. That's really, that's really powerful mm -hmm. stuff. And it is, it is definitely, we are moving into the, the feminine age and, it, you know, um, equal rights for women is, is, is gathering pace, even if there are doubters that say that, you know, women are still not quite on wage parity and things like that. But we are getting there. We are certainly seeing a movement towards that. I'm just conscious that we're, we're close to the end of time. That's something I just wanted to address as a tool to pick up on something that, that you've mentioned there, Carly. Um, you talked about Mark Santos and people uh, that you admire as being um, the exemplifications of, of what we, is being taught here. And so one of the tools that we use, and I was funnily enough, coincidence or not, I was only speaking about this yesterday with, with Stan and a couple of other people about the power of bringing into your uh into your arsenal if you like into your weaponry bringing in the the power of assembling an invisible team of people you admire so this is the creative imagination for those who haven't read this chapter yet is that you it's an nlp tool that, that's often used is you think okay who are the key people that i really admire most in this world so you you gather a list of people that you know whether it's male or female you might have a mixture of both in the book bear in mind when the book was written he talks about men that's because that was a man's age as carly's just mentioned uh and to put it into the modern equivalent you could have well probably women would would have more female uh heroes or heroines i suppose and males would probably tend to have more male heroes but you can have both in your list so then you think, okay, if they were in this room with me now, if they were sitting around this table and I'm trying to solve a problem or I'm trying to figure out how do I accumulate this wealth or how do I solve this problem of third world nation not having enough water or whatever the, the, the issue is that you want to resolve, you ask, you know, for me, one of the obvious ones would be someone like Richard Branson. I would put him on my list and I go, so Richard, what do you think we should do about this? Give me some answers. What would be your insight? The power of that is that you, because of what you know about that person, what you've read about them, what videos you've watched, you've absorbed some of the, the awareness of how they approach problems, of how they think, of how they would act in certain situations. So you tap into that. It could be your own parents. You might say, you know, what would you do in this situation, dad? And your dad's not around anymore and my parents are not around, but I can... I can actually imagine what my father would say to me if I was asking for guidance in this, in this area. So you can assemble your own invisible force, your own mastermind team of people who can help guide you. And there may be guardian angels too, people that you can ask who could, who could advise me on this? Who's got the wisdom and the, the solution to this problem that I can use going forward. And that's very, very powerful. That's one of the things he talks about towards the end of this chapter is, that is so powerful. developing that. <laughs> Anyone want to add anything to that? That's very powerful. I was going to say that's so powerful. I'm going to start doing that. That's so powerful. I'm going to put you in it, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And Carly and Vicky. The, the advantage you. is you can also call me too. You can always send me an email or a text message and what do you think right. of that? And, and, you um, know, I, I kind of think sometimes too that we can tap into our our parents that have passed away and people that we admired that have passed away I think that's still a, a possibility as well certainly mentors that you've had it might be a teacher it might be your grandparent yes. right? somebody yes. who's been an influential force in your life and they may not be around anymore, but you can say, you can imagine how they would approach that problem. And, and you can summon that wisdom. It's there at your fingertips. You've just got to call it forward. And that's coming up in the time of the sixth sun. And I've just been watching um, The Last Shaman. 
which is the same sort of kind of sort of stuff tapping into that kind of um you know old relation um yeah so you know grandparents and past lives and that sort of stuff <laughs> yeah so you you can actually if you really want to tap into that you find yourself with a with a big problem trying to solve find yourself a quiet space somewhere where you can sit preferably with nature around you and you can close your eyes and think and imagine this person is here with you now and obviously you would call a person whose skill sets or whose wisdom fits the circumstances you know if you just to pull a, a topic if you were trying to solve an engineering problem you'd think who do i know who's an engineer that would be able to solve this problem so you would call them forward and you'd go okay what is your advice on this? How would you approach this? Who would you, who would you talk to? What resources do you think we might need? And by asking those better questions, you tap into that power of that person, even though they're not here. And we know that thoughts are things. We know that thoughts are energy. We've talked about this all through the call. So those thoughts are powerful. You can tap into the mind of someone who's not there. I call on my parents all the time and my ancestors all the time and my all my teachers, my yoga teachers and yeah, you're so you're so right. We are all connected. Remember that we are, you know, this I know this is going into philosophical or spiritual debate, but we I, I certainly believe that we are all one. We are all a universal force. We've just forgotten that and we've you know, as as we've grown as individuals we've started to think of ourselves as individuals, as being separate, as being isolated. But that, that's the human condition. But the reality is we're actually, you know, Wayne Dyer said it, we're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But we you know, Tony, I think we have the capability of healing generational wounds by transforming them in this time. Yeah. And I think, you know, things like with NLP, you call it timeline therapy. That's exactly what's happening, you know? And, and, and you think it's kind of a theory, but it, and, and it's something you're making up in your own head. But in fact, it's, it's a universal opportunity. Yeah. Well, we are conscious, I'm just conscious of the fact we are coming to time. I'd just like, for those who haven't read it, I think that this, um, there's just a couple of paragraphs here that I'd like to read. One is the starting point of all achievement is desire. We've heard that in earlier chapters. The finishing point is that brand of knowledge, which leads to understanding, understanding of self, understanding of others, understanding of the laws of nature, recognition and understanding of happiness. He again advises that you, that you go back to this chapter, reread it. Um, I think this is not this is not a book that you just read and put back on the bookshelf and you know never pick it up again. This is a book you go back to as a reference journal, and as I've said before, take into account the era that, that in which it was written and bring it into your into the modern world of you know um, where we have equality and and different thinking. Um, he says that if you repeat this experience from time to time, giving no concern as to how much or how little you learn at the time, because every little snippet, like we said, is a penny dropping, right? Eventually you will find yourself in possession of a power that will enable you to throw off discouragement, master fear, overcome procrastination, and draw freely upon your imagination. Then you will have felt the touch of that unknown something, which has been the moving spirit of every truly great thinker, leader, artist, musician, writer, or statesman, then you will be in a position to transmute your desires into their physical or financial counterpart as easily as you may lie down and quit at the first sign of opposition. So instead of quitting, instead of giving up, use the power of this unseen force, tap into it and develop your ability to do so. Keep, keep on practicing. You know, with little things like I use the parking ferry every day whenever I want to go and park somewhere. The parking. Me too, and I have for years. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so the more you can tap into seeing what you want, 
I think a lot of the time, one of the biggest things that we do is we allow the world to dictate to us what's going to happen in our lives. And instead, if we set our intentions and our intentions are from the heart, as I know Carly would say, because I can, I can, I can imagine what Carly would say in certain situations. I can hear her voice speaking to me. Um, that you tap into your heart when you're coming from a heart place of good intention, you can create the things that you intend to, to create. You can bring in unseen forces and you know, as Carly said there in the box, you, you give yourself permission to have what you truly want. It's okay to be a little bit selfish because the word selfish has got that connotation of being mean spirited or nasty, but it's not. It's actually, if you, you know, put the oxygen mask on first, you can't help anybody else. Self caring. So, yeah. Self care. I agree with Julie. It's self care. It's not selfish, it's self care. <laughs> Self-care. Self -care. Thank you. Yeah. Reward. Reward also. Reward yourself yeah. for the good that you do. Yeah. Yep. So um, next week will be the last chapter 15 and then a summary of the book. Um, I plan and hope that I will be able to run that call because I'm going to Queensland. So I've just got to figure out, I think we're two hours difference in Queensland. Are you? Think so yeah you're two um, hours before us so that will make it 9 30 that time instead of 7 30. um obviously won't change the time for wherever you are now whatever time zone you're in um but it's just one for me but i will be with family over in queensland so i'll have to excuse myself from whatever proceedings are going on there and be able to host the call and take my book with me so uh has anyone got any else last thoughts that they would like to add on these two chapters anything they've learned today that's particular significance or they want to share with the group uh, I'll, I'll share something like because you mentioned selfish just remind yourselves that selfish is not selfish it's only what our community decided was growing up because if you can't do self-care if you can't fully care for yourself and be selfish about it be unconditionally loving in that selfishness to take care of self who else is going to do it for you? Right. There's nothing wrong with selfish. In fact, if if we didn't have that polarity, if we didn't have the understanding of what true selfishness means, we wouldn't take care of anything. It starts from within and then it ripples out and we take care of our community from there. We take care of our animals, our plants, our earth all because we took care of self. This is what this whole platform seems to be about. Yeah, and just, just one to just add to that is it comes back to intention. So your intention is not to be self or self-caring or selfish at the expense of somebody else. It's so that you can be of more service to other people by getting yourself in the best state possible to be of service. Yes. Perfect. Okay, I think that's uh, that's that's a wrap, as they say. I think that's a perfect point on which to end the call. Thank you, everyone, so much for your contribution and attendance today. Uh, I hope you all got out of it. Thank you. Please go Thank back. You. Reread those chapters. Uh, highlight the things that that leap out at you, and you'll find when you reread when you reread it, different things leap out at you because of that penny yeah. dropping that we talked about. Um, I'm just so thrilled that we're doing this because I'm now really seeing why I need to read it. <laughs> we all need to keep reading it. Yeah. And, uh, let's give our positive thoughts to Glenn for a speedy recovery today. And yes. have an awesome week and I'll catch you at the next Mastermind, whenever that may be. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.